Hi, this is Beth Beard from MyLittleCraftBlog.com and today we're going to be making these little octagon boxes with the lid. This Halloween one I posted the other day on my blog and this one I made with the Stampin' Up! Switches Brew Designer Series paper, um, Witches Brew Washi Tape. I made the rosette on the top with Stampin' Up!'s rosette die. And then I made a Christmas one using the Winter Frost Designer Series paper. Love that shimmer on it. And then this pretty silver ribbon. I uh, used a frosted embellishment. And then I made the snowflake on top with the Frosted Flurry stamp set. And also comes with or has uh, coordinating framelits to cut out the snowflakes. And then also here I used some of the silver foil paper for part of the snowflake and then some silver glimmer paper. And it's a pretty good size box on the inside. The lid opens up so it'll hold quite a bit of candy or small gifts which I thought would be nice at Christmas time. And then I made this one as a thank you. I, I love this Modern Melody paper uh, Stampin' Up! has right now. I bought a ton of it so I've been using it for just about everything. And then today I'll also show you how I made this great big flower. And it's a pretty sturdy flower and it's on the lid so you don't have to worry when it's opened that it'll be damaged. And there's the inside of it. I know it's hard to see with it being black. Okay. We'll set these aside. The first thing you're going to need is Stampin' Up's Mini Milk Carton Die. And I've used this one a lot here lately. I've showed you a couple different boxes that you can make with it. So that's what the die looks like. And in order to make this box, you're going to need to cut out four pieces of basic black cardstock using this die. And I normally run it through with two sheets of cardstock at a time. So we're going to need two for the lid and then two for the bottom. So we'll separate these. Take our paper trimmer. Now for the lid, I know it's hard to see with it being black. The flaps are on this side. So this is the way we're going to put it in our paper trimmer. And you can see the tab down here on the bottom. And we're going to move it to the three inch mark. And we're going to cut that off. This with the flaps we're going to save and this you can put in your scrap pile. So we're going to do that again for the other piece. Go to the three inch mark. This side has all the triangles on it. Tab is down here. Flaps are on this side. And we're going to cut that at three inches. That we're going to save. This goes in the scrap pile. For our other two pieces for the bottom portion of the box, there's a score line right along in here. The flaps are over on this side this time. We're going to cut this section off lining up with that score line. There's triangle fold, uh, triangle score marks up here at the top and we don't need that. So I'm just lining it up in my paper trimmer, the score line, and we're going to cut that off. And we'll do the same for both pieces. So we'll work on the bottom portion first. So next thing you'll do is just fold on all the score lines. Then we'll add some sticky strip. We'll peel off the red backing. And then we'll line up our edges. Okay, now in order to make the lid fit correctly, we're going to have to cut a section of this off on this side. So we get our paper trimmer back out. And I cut off probably, well let me zoom in here, see if you can see. I'm lining up the edge of my paper 
with part of the track right here and it's probably a little bit less than a quarter of an inch and we'll cut that off so you can see it's not very much that I took off like I said it's probably less than a quarter of an inch maybe right at a quarter so now we're ready to decorate it before we assemble it so I've cut eight pieces of Modern Medley Designer Series paper that measure one and five eighths by one and an eighth. And then I've cut eight pieces of brown sugar cardstock that measures measure one and three quarter by one and a quarter. And then for the Designer Series paper, we're going to sponge the edges and bake brown sugar and I'm just using a stamping sponge. As you can see when you cut the designer series paper there's white on the side and we want it to look vintage so we'll just sponge those edges. And then for the cardstock I sponged it in early espresso ink. Here these together. And I've done this for all eight pieces, or the other remaining seven, I should say. So now we'll go ahead and attach them. And I should also say, too, where I cut this section off, your box won't exactly be the exact same size on all eight sides, but I really don't think that you notice it. I mean, it's such a minute amount. And once you decorate the outside with the cardstock, I don't think you can really tell. So, we'll put these on. Okay, now we're going to flip it over and we're just going to put a little bit of adhesive on each one of the flaps except for the first one. The first one we're going to skip. And for this I'm just going to use Stampin' Up Snail, uh, just regular double sided adhesive and you'll see why. It's not, it's just to get the flaps in place, not really to, meant to be very sturdy. So I'm just going to add a little on each of the flaps, maybe a little bit more on the end one. So on the end one I put just a little bit more. So now we'll remove the red backing. And we'll line up our edges. Okay, now in order to get our box to line up correctly, this is the flap with no adhesive and I'm going to use my grid lines. I'm going to use the horizontal and the vertical. And for this one with no adhesive, I'm going to make sure that it's lined up correctly. With the horizontal line, I'm going to skip this corner piece and the next one over I'm going to make sure is lined up with the vertical line. Just so my box isn't wonky. So I'll put this one down first, no adhesive, a little bit and then we'll go put the corner piece down and then making sure that this one's lined up the side one here then we'll push that one down okay and then we'll do the same thing on this side make sure that this one's going horizontal we're not going to worry about the corner piece but we want to make sure that this one's lined up so then we'll push that one down then the corner and lining this one up Then the next one goes down. Now we'll line up this side going horizontal, this side going not, not worrying about the corner piece and then making sure that this one is lined up vertically like that. And as you can see, there's a hole in the center, and you can see all of um, our flaps, but we're going to cover that up. Using the Circle Framelits collection, 
I'm using the third largest framelit. I've cut out two pieces of basic black cardstock. We're going to take a little bit of liquid glue. I've covered it with some uh, Tombow liquid glue and we're going to set that right on the center and just hold it down for a second until that liquid glue takes up. Then our other circle we're going to put more adhesive on the back, more liquid glue or you can use double sided adhesive whenever you have. And we're going to put this down in the center to make the inside look pretty. push that down really good. Okay, so there's the bottom of our box. So now we'll set that aside and we'll work on the lid. So for the lid we have these two pieces remaining so these will fold on the score line. Now we'll add some sticky strip to those tabs. Remove the red backing. Now normally I would get a nice tight fit, but since this is going to be the lid, I don't know how well you can see that, I'm not going to butt it up to the, to the corner. I'm just going to leave a little bit, a little gap there just so my lid doesn't fit real tight. So it's probably a sixteenth, an eighth, about a sixteenth of an inch. And you can notice it more when I lay it out. Maybe it's more of an eighth of a gap, eighth of an inch of a gap that I left. Okay, so now we're going to decorate the lid. Take another piece of sticky strip and I'm going to run it all along this bottom edge. Remove the red backing. Okay, now I have some Stampin' Up! Baked Brown Sugar Elastic Ribbon. Love this stuff. Let's see, it's stretchy. And we're going to put that right along the, the sticky strip, but I'm going to leave a little piece here on the end overhang. All right, now we'll remove the red backing on this tab. We're going to take our box here. And the lid to our box is going to go on like this, so it's not very deep of a lid at all. So we're just going to line that up. That little tab, I've got a score line right here. I'm just going to come over it and hold that and then wrap my lid around the top of the box and line up those edges. And this little piece that I left overhang will just snip that off. Now for the top, 
We're going to do the same thing that we did in the bottom. But now we've got the shape of our box to go by, so we'll just push the tabs in. We'll take another black circle that we cut using the same size, the third largest uh, circle framelit die. We'll put some liquid glue on it. Make sure our lid's down all the way. And then we'll put one on the inside to hide that as well. So we've got another circle here. And some more, more liquid adhesive. We'll just place that down in the center. And there's our lid. So now I'll show you how to I made the flower on top. Okay, so in order to make the flower, um, these are all the punches and die that you're going to need. Um, I'm using Stampin' Up's large scallop circle die, and I cut out two pieces of the music note from Modern Mel Melody Designer Series paper, and a third one in basic black cardstock. Next punch is the two and three eighths scallop circle punch. I punched out three of those. And then the regular scallop circle punch, one of those. And then the small inch and a quarter, I did one in basic black. So we'll set these aside. Now the three larger ones, we're going to line these up. And this technique is not new, it's been around for a while. Well, before we do that, let's sponge all the edges. So I'm using baked brown sugar. And then to give it more definition and make the leaves more pronounced, I also took some early espresso ink and sponged around just the outer edge. Okay, move our pieces aside. I'm going to set down a piece of paper towel. Working with the three largest circles first, we're going to line all three of these up. I'm going to take my paper snips and I'm going to make a cut at every other scallop. So it'll be two scallops and then a cut. And you're going to do that for all of your scallops. So now we'll do the next bunch. We'll line up these three. You just have to be careful when you cut in, the smaller you get, that you don't go in too far. You don't want to go all the way into the center, or otherwise you'll be cutting one. Okay, so now we'll lay out our pieces, and I've got some water here in a spray bottle, and you just want to lightly mist it. You don't want to mist it too much, just very lightly. And now I've got a paintbrush, 
and I'm going to take each one of these petals now and I'm just going to roll it around the edge of the paintbrush. And then we'll set this one off to dry and we'll take our next scallop circle, lightly mist it, and we'll do the same thing. I'm just laying my paintbrush down in between the two scallops and bringing up both sides and just wrapping it around there. Okay, and we'll set that one off to dry. Okay, I went ahead and kept curling all the petals, still using the same paintbrush, even when I got down to the little itty bitty one um, in basic black. So now all my petals, each layer is good and dry. You, um, you don't want to work on them if it's still damp. If they are still damp and you want to go ahead and finish your flower, hit it with the heat tool for a couple seconds to dry them. And then once they dry, then they're no longer fragile, they're very sturdy. So working with the basic black one, that's going to be the base of our flower, I'm going to flip it over on the back side and I'm going to add some uh, liquid glue in the center. And then I'll put down one of these petals, moving it, uh, alternating it in between the other petals. Add some more adhesive. You can use whatever kind of adhesive you want. You could use double-sided adhesive. You could use glue dots, uh, Stampin' Dimensionals. It doesn't matter. Since I'm using liquid glue, I'm going to hold it there for just a second until it sets up before I put in the next layer. What's nice about the liquid glue, if you need to move it, you can before it sets up. You can spin it if your petals aren't lining up the way you want. Put in the next layer. Okay, and for this black for the center, I think I'm going to poke it down my paintbrush, make sure it's in the center. And to finish off the center, like I did for this one, I'm using one of Stampin' Up's uh, large basic jewels. Just give it a little fluff, and you can hear it's very sturdy. Once the paper, uh, designer series paper, or the cardstock's been wet and dries, it becomes very sturdy and it's no longer fragile. So I thought it would make a nice lid for the box because people are going to be handling it, and if they touch it, uh, it's not going to hurt it. Okay, so if you're using liquid glue like me, you might want to let it sit there for a little bit and set up, but I'm going to go ahead and attach it to the top of the box. And all I do is just flip it over, add some more liquid adhesive, or you could use hot glue uh, to the back side and stick it down. Let that sit for a few minutes. Okay, so now we'll work on um, the front part. The thank you that I did is from the Hello Lovely stamp set. Sorry about the glare. I'm using this stamp right here. And 
a piece of uh, scrap paper and some black stays on. Now my stamp is actually larger than the paper. I'm not using the entire stamp. I'm only going to use the portion of it that says thank you. Then I'm going to take my paper snips and trim along the outer edge. Now I'm going to take my greeting and I'm going to attach it to a piece of brown sugar cardstock. And then I'm going to cut around the outer edge again, leaving a little banner, leaving a, about an eighth of an inch border. Now I've taken a button and tied it, I threaded it through and tied it with some linen thread, uh, some linen thread from Stampin' Up. And the buttons are designer naturals and these are very pretty. They're all different colors and they're wood grain and they look natural. So I've got my button and I'll take a glue dot. So I just put a mini glue dot on the back, maybe two. And we'll figure out what part of the box we want to be the front, which one looks the best. So I think that looks good. So we'll just put our button on. We'll put a little adhesive on our greeting. We'll tuck that behind the button. And there they are. Aren't they cute? If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks. Bye.